Harvey um, obviously going to be doing well in the lane to come out of that early laning stage. So I bet we also have this this Venge visage, the double Vs. Yeah, that's it. It's the most powerful thing in the world. I mean, what's, have... a, what, what's a double V, Shippo? If you put double two Vs together, it's a W. Yes. It is true. It's a fat win. I'm down for that. Seems it's logical. Seems like unbeatable logic. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to have the most net worth by 25 minutes, Gary? Oh, God. Predictions. Most net worth by 25 minutes. I think Bristleback. Okay. Play with highest total magical pure damage. Probably Zeus. Zeus, yeah. Total magical pure damage by 10 minutes. Probably Zeus. Oh, they're going. Sweet and strong getting slapped down already. All right. Fair enough. Play with the least death. Not sweet and strong. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the game? Hmm... 30 seconds to I think that's a difficult one. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put Lal. I think Lal's going to pop off. Even though I kind of think this game, uh, this series is going to go three games. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, putting, I'm putting Lal. I'm putting V2 and calling it a day. Okay, that's fair enough. I think Lal could, could be Lal too. I'm, I'm just putting, I'm actually, actually, I'm putting Lal for all four. Damn. <laughs> I put Lal for the middle too. And then V2 for the other two. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh... This Bristol, it's not the freest game, honestly. Just the, playing into to Zeus core, who has the static field shard that does uh, percentage damage, is mm -hmm. always really nice. Like you said, there's that break sh uh, talent on wow. Shadow Shaman, <laughs> which is something to think about later down the line. Um, I think Visage, whilst Bristol's picked usually to be the counter to Visage, because uh, like, Visage wants to run you down. Bristol just turns us back. The birds into a Vanguard Bristol, they do so little damage, especially pre-level 12. It's actually like ridiculously hard to kill him. However, what Visage does have is Soul Assumption, which is a lot of magic nuke. And I've seen these game and matchups so many times now where I don't think it is just necessarily only one-sided for Bristleback. Because you can buy a Wraith Pact, you can ionize around it. Well, already we're seeing that magic nuke damage come into play. Dahak's used three Soul Assumptions, Soneko a couple of stuns and Lays. Feeling worse for wear in that bottom lane. Taking a tremendous amount of damage. That's going to give Dahak a nice little time here, securing his last hits. Two for two. Right. Lies knows, Lies knows this matchup. He has already brought out a salve. He understands he's going to get nuked down. And he just needs to get his braces and stats going just to, to help bring up that regen. Sineko getting turned on a little bit, forcing him back and getting the kill. That's an important one for Na'Vi. So now they can salve back up on Laser, like you said. Force Dahak back under his tower. Nice bit of revenge there for Na'Vi out of Sweden Strong. I was peeking into mid lane and I'm, I'm wondering here. Bat Rider, no stick against Zeus. Zeus does have one against Bat. What's the reason no one is just straight up rushing bottle? I don't think you feel that. The, the regen from Ball is so nice and with how many runes there are, I, I don't know if you necessarily need it. Because look how much damage no one's actually taking. By the time his Ball comes, he's just going to be able to heal right back up to full with the bottle and then get the... the the war rune. I think he just feels like he can out regen with that and doesn't need a stick yet. Okay. I get it a little bit later on. I have to queue up now. And Lyle on five stacks. He's actually going aggressive here. Pops his stick. A level two arc lightning. And now drops no one pretty low, but you're right. Equal HP and mana. I mean, that bottle going to get full utilization. And the third lane, there are three in Dota 2. Up at top, V Tune and Solo up against Noticed and Roger. It's like Shadow Shaman getting a pull off. But how, like, I, how, how much aggression can, can Navi have here? It's just a, okay. a passive defend bristle lane, isn't it? I have been watching this lane. Uh, I'm very multi talented. I can Ooh. watch multiple lanes at once, yeah. They've been going on V Tune a lot. He has a, the healing from Solo, getting this headdress, get, bringing, being able to give him some tangos, um, obviously using his own regen. But he's being pressured pretty hard on. Between his net, his uh, losses don't exactly show. He's not exactly being like kept off the lane, but they keep trying to poke him on this off lane, throwing out the hammer. They shackle him, click him. They're not letting Vtune just sit and last it for free, but they're not really able to kill him either. It's hard. He's a very tanky boy. Yeah, it's not been not been comfortable for him though. As Roger moves back to make sure these camps are blocked up, Chen going to try and pull large camp back into the wave as this. Dire wave under the tier one of the radiant, not where Vtune wants to be. 
And he did uh, a nice little move with his courier, sent it to the Radiant Secret Shop to grab his Ring of Health. So he gets it that little bit faster. Nice efficiency from VTune's Bristle. Yeah. No an Ogre Frost Mage heading to the mid lane. This is the gank of all time. <laughs> Whoa! Oh. Five armor. God, I remember the days it was like eight armor, seven armor, something like that. It was a ridiculously strong creep. A soul Assumption, always problematic in that bottom lane for Lays. Another one comes with a wave of terror over the top, sniping him out from long range. Oh, oh, and I was talking about the efficiency play. Oh, hang on a second, they're killing the Frost Mage. Down you go, Ogre. Shackled and killed. But Vtune, yeah, he migrated his courier to the secret shop, brought out his ring of health. He delayed it in the ancients for a little, like in the triangle for a little while, but then he left it mid and lol. I was wondering why lol was tipping him. The courier would just sat in the river. Gave him a free courier kill. He got his ring of health, right? Yeah, he got it, no problems. Misclick accidental. Solo's gonna leave that bounty rune for his mid laner. But we, we did just see, you know, a, a, a problem that Bet Boom have in his top lane. And they tried to go on V2 with Shackles and Starbreaker. And I don't think he particularly cares. With that Ring of Health, especially not. I mean, they're going to keep trying to go on him. And, and they should, to be fair. He's not got a wand. He's not bringing any other extra region. You, there's a potential to will him down. Maybe when they get level 5, they might have the damage to do it. Because Chen's playing very hard in the jungle, so this Bristle's always alone. I mean, he's gone aggressively towards Secret Shop, yeah. which opens him up to Roger and Otis just to kill the Bristle. And he, yeah. he, must, he must have had money for Vanguard, but yeah, over eager to finish it off. Yeah, he, did. He, can't, he can't really do that. Like, Solo's leaving you alone. Uh, you just gotta respect that, especially when you're playing on under half health. And this Mars is honestly, I feel, itemizing on Mars is despair mode. Like playing this bot lane and and dying the way he has, you want to get your bracer, you want to get your falcon blade, you want to get maybe two braces, you've seen three braces. Look at them just hunting solo. Roger has been making his life miserable and Notice makes the long rotation over because of this observer ward Roger got to place a little earlier on. He hid in the, he hid in the camp and just waited. And they're trying to move in onto Lyle mid, but the Heavenly Jump gets him over the cliff. And he's level 6, so these Shackles and a bit more of this Arc Lightning damage might open it up for a kill with Seneko's help. But it is a tanky Batrider. Pops his full wand. And he'll sustain on oh, a bottle refill. is going to be there. Thanks to Solo Chen TPing in. Yeah, just to quickly finish my thought, the, the Mars... Like in this lane, he really needs the raindrops, so he's basically had to finish a full one and raindrops on top of only having one bracer. So I think he just feels a little bit unhappy. Like his last hit comes a lot harder because he doesn't have the extra stats, and we see like all these denies from Visage. Like his lane is actually quite hard um, when typically we'd see Mars kind of owning. They're even looking to rotate here with Raju. I think another death here on on Lays could really, really set his game back. Oh, absolutely. I might just have to go on Sweden strong, though. The easier target, burst down, the snap fire. And there, like you mentioned, Roger's rotation all the way in from the back, gets the snipe, and he still has shackles. So Lays, level five, doesn't have arena to try and protect himself. Caught out by the move in from Roger, and the familiars are up. So enough damage and chain lockdown to give Dahak a killing spree. What are the chances, man? Dahak hitting his six at that exact moment as well. <laughs> just gives you the... All the damage you need when everyone's super low on mana. Ah, perfectly timed. Yeah, this is a level 5 Mars with no points in Bulwark and no Soul Ring, so he doesn't have that extra armor that you'd need in the lane. He hasn't finished his phase boost, so he doesn't have armor from that. It's so difficult for him to lane because of all these small items he's had to buy to try and sustain. Yeah, and he might just die again. Roger's here. He's looping in behind. Lays, shackled. They'll dive this easily. They've got Solar Guardian over the top to absolutely secure the kill. Shut down the Mars. Eight minutes in, he's still level five. Three deaths on this Mars for Lays. And with a catapult wave, they're going to push straight into tier one on the safe lane. What a good play. This is really nice. And with Dark Visage, you know, we've seen him suffer in a few games where, like you were saying, right, that Enigma pick, 
with the Marcy. Well, hang on a second, just top lane, they've gone on the Bristle. v and again, stepping too far forward. Caught out by Lala and Noticed, who both maneuver themselves top and now deny the tower with Suneko. This is good news for you, Gary. This means that uh, actually Navi will win this game because this is what happened Radiant's last game. From Navi to Bet Boom and then Bet Boom won. <laughs> so it's like win laning stage, lose the game. Yeah. Radiant are scanning. I don't know about that, Shibo. <laughs> 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 don't know about that one. Because hey. yeah, like like Dahak's visage, when he's behind, it has looked you know, like a bit of a struggle to get him back in the, in the groove. But when he's ahead, I don't think I've seen Dahak lose games when he's <laughs> when he's doing so well for himself. It is possible, but it is definitely hard. The, we're hit rapidly approaching this 10 minute mark. Um, Roger right now is being given this bot lane, which is a really nice play by Bet Boom. They're setting themselves up for the Roche. Like by Dahak jungling here, Roger will get his level five. By 10 minutes, he can take the Tome and then he'll have his level six, but they don't need to give it to Venge. And then they can just swing right into the Roche pit. And Navi will need to use Chen to scout it and think about it. It should at least be on their minds. Because yeah, in, in like one minute from now, you have the potential to have this Aegis and then you're just in such a great position on that boom. Yeah, I mean, one big upside though for Na'Vi is that the mech's done for solo. He's closing on level six. So you will have this burst heal coming out of the Chen when the initiations are made by Bet Boom. Yeah. Or, or when those moves, you know, towards tier ones and Roche are in play. But I think it's been difficult for no one to really find his place on this map. Like, okay, Mars has had a tragic game. He's less than 3,000 net worth 10 minutes in. <laughs> but, but no one's bad. Even with Boots of Travel, he still needs... You know, that time for BKB, Dying he needs space to be able to farm attack. through jungle and stacks in the Ancients. And I don't think right now he, he's got anyone to play with. Like your Snap is underleveled, your Mars is underleveled. You really need these teamfight ultis to actually play in a lane. I think Snap's okay. Uh, there's a there's a courier with a book on it coming. Oh, okay. From, yeah, so she Fair has enough. six now. That's nice. Yeah, they're, uh -huh. they're going to take bot tower or at least... Th this is the thing. Right now, I think Beboom can just go Roche like, instantly and and take it because they're going to be playing bot for this tower to try and trade and force the issue. Bristol wants to be playing bot to take the Ancients. Oh, they're actually just going for a mid fight instead. Oh, the smoke breaks. Does no one see them coming? He does. Fly fire flies off to the right, but the Zeus able to close the gap and no one. First down to half HP already. The Thunder God's Wrath negating the heals from Chen, blowing up the Mars as well. Now it's a bloodbath. Sweden strong TP'd into the Fen just to die. And Solo's Chen, what are you doing? A double for Dahak and Na'Vi obliterated. Holy moly, what a fight. I totally thought they were just gonna dodge this idea. I mean, I guess seeing four heroes bot, you feel like, yeah, okay, never mind. We don't need to take Roche. We can just take this mid tower instead, which is just as good to be fair because the earlier the Roche is, it's kind of like a good and a bad thing. If you get it really quickly, then it means your second Roche, the big strong Roche that you use to kind of win the game, uh, it comes earlier and you'll get that shot earlier. So that, that's the nice thing, right? But on the other hand, are you really utilizing a 10 minute Aegis to its fullest? Maybe you want a couple of my items. Maybe it's fine to just wait 79 seconds now for this next surf and ward and then take it. It's not like the end of the world to delay by a minute and a half and taking this mid tower which can become really hard to take if the enemy defend it well you're getting that objective out of the way now i think you're pretty damn happy this was best case scenario for them getting so many kills and covering the tps from navi with the the dawn ult too just like made the area denial really strong yeah that's like there's no zone for navi to play into and this has got to be one of the, the hardest situations to be in, decision-making-wise anyway, because you kind of have two paths as Na'Vi, right? You've got a strong bristle bank, you've got heals from Chen, you've got teamfight ultis from Snap and Mars. So you have tools and you can think about playing aggressively to try and break the rut, get back into the game, and make plays with this bat rider, like, like they're doing bot onto Roger. As he turns around and just shackles up the bat, Lays doesn't have spear anymore, so Roger just stands in the arena, doesn't give a damn about Na'Vi's initiation. So you can make these aggressive plays, or you can kind of sit back and farm and get to your item timings, the BKB on bat, the bristle with the Aghanim Scepter, but then you're letting the opponents farm and scale and accelerate at the same time. So it's like, which 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 direction do you want to go? Passive yeah. or aggressive? Na'Vi right now, uh, the, the, the wards are coming up on Bed Boom, and they have a smoke. They might smoke to this Roche Pit. They might try and take top tower. You have two clear objectives open to you. If Na'Vi are just going to play bot the way they are, and Bet Boom have a ward, like two good wards out that spots all this movement. 
I, th I think they they can just do whatever they want. No one. Can't be dying again. Sweden's strong there to cookie him away from Dahak. Yeah, they've got smoke here on Roger. Looks like they want to try. Group up around that mid tower, push out one more wave. Think about heading into Roche, like you've been saying. Navi in a good position to combat that, though. Four heroes in the top jungle, all farming together. They're actually just moving in really aggressively. Dahak has the drums before finishing Wraith Pack. So his ability to fight is much, much uh, better. Yeah, and he's gone for early boots as well. We've we've seen him skip the boots quite often. Like what's what's the difference maker here for him to buy boots rather than finish off the Wraith Pack? Go for the like he's opting for more move speed in this game in particular. They are rotating a fair amount. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just a preference or playing into a slows with the sticky napalm with the bristle goo. Yeah, that yeah, makes sense. Sure. Don't want to get caught out. So yeah, Navi. You know, you said it. They, they, they've done the research. They know that this Roche timing is absolutely available to Bet Boom. So they smoke, they move. But Zeus, with the overwhelming vision from that Thunder God's Wrath, sees them all moving towards the triangle. And Arvi repurpose that smoke into a push mid. But look at the damage onto Laze. He's going to get chain stunned. The Hand of God and a bit of heal from the mech, keeping the Mars alive to allow him to turn. Good swap out of the kisses, though. Keeps noticed up and running. While v chasing Suneko, but unable to stick on a target and kill her off. And now with Familiar's landing on the Bristleback, he's the target of choice for Roger and his Serpent Wards. Does have the Shackles available again. Throw in some more Soul Assumption spells towards the back of v but he's too tanky. Instead, now, Lay's being hunted. Dahak's familiars. Acorn shots bouncing between them, but he lands them on top of Mars's head. And Sweden's strong. Are you all right to, to get away from this? It doesn't look like it. The blast damage from this lightning bolt and soul assumption. Just way too much to handle. Why risk trying to do a Roche under the noses of Navi when you can simply kill them and do it instead? Yeah, why kill creeps? Why kill towers? Kill heroes. And now it's Roche time. Wraith Pack done on Dahak's Visage. Desso there for noticed. Makes this a very simple endeavor. I thought that would go way worse for Bedboom after the the mech and the Chen heal. Yeah. That's like, yeah, they like totally disengaged. They, they wasted so many spells on the Mars. Like they, they re re revealed all of their positions off of this. And it ended up just not mattering. Just because at the same time, this swap nullified the the Mars Arena and Kisses and the, I think they miss all the Kisses on the Venge too. They just, all their damage kind of disappeared and suddenly like, Bad doesn't want to hard commit and he doesn't have a BKB yet. It's scary, they do have a lot of stuns and but this chase from Bet Boom was just way stronger with the aura from the drums, drum active, Roger just being right up there in position, feeling himself, he's, he's not afraid at all. Yeah, so this, this is why I asked the question earlier of what, what does Na'Vi do? Do they want to sit back and passively wait for for their items to hit a timing like we've seen teams like One Move do, for example, right? They they kind of draw the game out. Uh, even at the Arlington Major, one of the greatest praises for some of the Chinese teams like RNG and LGD was their ability to come out of a losing laning stage and buy time for themselves to hit a timing. Whether it's the, the best timing they can or what they wanted when they drafted the hero, it doesn't matter. It's a timing that they can play around and win a team fight. Um, but Navi opting to go for the other direction, which is uh, try and push the issue, force Bet Boom back away from uh, from their plans. Solo is going to get picked off in the enemy forest. And there's Army. We will survive for now, it looks like. I like what you're saying. Navi definitely approaching it one way, but it's kind of wonky and scuffed because Bet Boom are pushing their issue harder. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Roger. Oh, the Solar Guardian. Well, is that enough to He's heal living. him? He's living and kill him. I noticed. Yeah, it, well, well, that tip, well deserved. Notice comes in and saves the day. <gasps> oh my god, no one doesn't see the Shadow Shaman. And now he's being hunted. The spear misses, but so does the Starbreaker. Can Lal find a bit of vision and jump they need? Nah, the Batrider's going to TP. That's for me. Ro Roger's still here. How, where, where did he come from? I thought he was he was going to run back to Fountain. But now he's got Tranquil Boots and a Blink Dagger. Jumps back in towards the Lays Mars, who is now 1-6-0. I, 
The Roger's saddest story finishes ever told. Link before Mars, bro. At this point, you gotta call it. <laughs> He's making you into a support on the enemy team. I mean, Roger, he blinked up and dodged that sticky napalm that would have killed him. And he just continues to rap, use that ward for the vision. But he's playing so well. That's yeah, superb play from Batboom. Now stealing Ancients away from Na'Vi. Grab up a couple of tier two neutral items and swap the bristle back in. Serpent wards and familiars. He's meant to be tanky. He's meant to be tanky. But he just isn't. <laughs> Not when you got four heroes hitting you with every single spell in their arsenal, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Wraith pack, serpent wards, familiars. <laughs> chuck the chuck the kitchen sink at him as well. While you're at it. Oh, they've wait. They found Lays. Okay now. Seneco just having a having a crack at the Mars. Uh, interesting cookie. Interesting cookie. Sweden strong stuck on the low ground now. They've arenaed up this Dawn and and Avenge, but Lays is just alone. It, 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 Navi are just bleeding out now. It's all it's all falling apart. Solo's being dived by familiars outside their own base on their doorstep. They're utilizing wards again. So what they're warding this series has been absolutely S tier. Having that high ground ward in the enemy jungle, having the lane ward bot, having this high ground ward bot, like you see everything. You know exactly where Navi is at all times. You're able to just smoke and run to whatever side of the, the base that you want. It's 19 minutes and these guys are trapped in their own base. Like how tragic is that? And this net worth lead will only increase during this, giving Dawnbreaker the, the the Aegis knowing that she's topping this net worth chart Radiant has a death scanning. like she's so strong too like you just look at the hawk yeah the hawk's playing his hero but like notice this cannot go unnoticed either yeah yeah oh, a true carry coming out of that dawnbreaker and oh. just the, the amount of net worth on on roger is is so hard to like you look at Lays. he finally gets an arena off it's not bad, and it's they're trying to punish this aggressive move by Betboom. And Roger is just there, with his blink, disengaging it. And Navi don't have the items to, to, to re-jump. It's so hard for them to play. And so far, Lal has been untouched completely. 408 on the Zeus. The Yule Scepter, able to keep him at a distance. There's probably still plays though. I think this smoke is a little rough because Laser's 25 gold off of having a blink dagger. Mm. There is a universe where they can blink and get off their spells and win a fight because they're, like you said, in the drafting phase, they don't have BKBs. They don't naturally buy them on a lot of their heroes. Um, like Lays will get one, not Lays, sorry, Notes will get one next up. But the Zeus, the Visage, these are definitely killable heroes. Yeah. Visage obviously has that shard though, so he has his defensive capabilities. But if you're able to like win a fight and force his shard, <laughs> oh god, no, but, Roger. Like, they saw Roger, they were going for Roger, but no one is the one to die first. Navi yeah. desperately need to trade out of the back of this. He throws the Serpent Wards down, he will drop. But look at how quickly Bet Boom swarmed down towards the bottom lane. They're ready here with the familiar stuns landing on Solo and V2, and they're blowing up Lays as well as Sweden strong and noticed. He's the one to come out with a triple kill. Swap back from Suneko as well. V2 displaced out of his base, star broken, killed off, and Dark on a wicked six streak. Another massive team fight for Bet Boom as they're diving behind tier threes. Notice is going for it. He blinks forward, star breaker, three hits, cracks down the chin. No tis god. 25 to 2. Na'Vi with no hope left. I love his Dawnbreaker. So aggressive, so brave. When did we start this series? An hour and a half ago? <laughs> yeah. Is Bad Boom really just sweeping it, huh? Jeez. Navi are making coordinated moves. They they feel so pulled apart by Bet Boom. They just aren't able to regain their footing. The, this smoke without your blink, this being apart, having no one getting picked off and not being ready to to fight around it. Imagine if they had been there with a, a counter initiate with a, an arena. It felt so hard for them to do anything to punish Bet Boom there. And they have their spells. Okay, they have their spells. They have BKB on Bat. They could def definitely. Potentially take a fight here. Yes, you've got one lane. It's okay. You have an Ags on Bristle, but you have damage. A smoke now with this blink on on Mars. Hail those kisses down. Get a lasso off. Like 
here's the thing. Here's what I was saying earlier. If you force Visage to use his shard, he's technically out of action then for the fight. And that t that could be the time needed to kill, say, Noticed. Right? If, if someone can burst down this Venge, if you can get a lasso onto Noticed, you can definitely put out the damage to kill them. They don't have BKBs yet. It's, it's in these kind of games where it really feels like Bet Boom have some like military strategist work, working with them. Because like there's the, the, something they used to do in the old days, um, like the uh, big fights and warfare. It wasn't just you know a thousand people charging into a thousand people like we see in the movies. There was uh, a lot of like you know tactics going into it. But there's this this idea of like creating a vacuum where you let your opponents kind of go into a space, you create a space for them to go into, and then you surround them. And that's what Bet Boom do so often, right? They they let Navi move into a lane, or they let Navi smoke and go into an area, and then all of a sudden they're you know surrounded by horsemen and archers, and there's no actual route out for them. Like, because Navi in that bottom lane, they saw Roger, and they're like, okay, here's an opportunity. We'll go, we'll go snipe Roger. We'll get a kill. We'll, we'll move across the map. We'll push out lanes. And all of a sudden, it's not just Roger. There's a solar guardian in there. There's four heroes surrounding you. And their options are just getting smaller and smaller. They, they smoke, looking for that fight. Don't quite get it. They re-smoke, thinking like, this is our timing. We have to make something happen now. And I agree. I actually think that those two smokes were a good idea. But the Zeus sniffing it out using yeah. that ult it totally ruins their move and then their wards get dewarded as well so that now you see them swing to the spot cliff and play around these wards instead like okay well this will be our our, our space our safe area but what are you losing from that you're losing roche you don't you have are. roche control now that's a pretty quick one at that plenty of minus armor from this venge and Dawnbreaker. <laughs> she gets bashed mid star breaker by the roche but no problem. It grabs the Aegis again, and there's a there's a shard on the floor in there. It's only going to get worse. They've purchased a gem. I love these early gems. We talked about it a little bit in past broadcasts. Uh, just becoming a, a very hard trend in these qualifiers. Yeah, it seems Not like good. every game, like 20 minutes in, someone's buying a gem. Yeah. And now Bamboo the ones that smoke. Out of the pit, up towards high ground. Blink BKB Dawnbreaker. If she sees someone, she's jumping and killing them. Like, Solo here has got to be so wary of his positioning. But at some point, you, you have to make a jump. You have to have a team fight to stop your buildings falling. I think blinking with BKB is how you throw this game, so I hope Nois doesn't do that. V2 going to try frontline. He has his own BKB. I don't know. Maybe it's fine just because of the Aegis. Well, they do catch out Notice with a Blink Spear. Notice comes back in with a Star Break to regen a bit of life. And V-Tune, he's, he's diving to hunt into the back lines. Aegis claimed, but your racks are already falling. Melee down, ranged about to drop. So that's the Bristleback BKB for, for an Aegis, while the Arena from Mars does trap two inside. Good kisses. Lol. And Suneko being focused, but it swapped no one into that Arena to allow Notice just to open up and shred through two heroes quickly in a row. And now, with a lasso on him, the rest of them can focus down Sweden strong. This has got to be game. Triple buyback from Na'Vi, but no Bristleback for 40 seconds. And Bet Boom just goes straight in towards mid, and there it is. No one calls it. One hour and 42 minutes it took for Bet Boom to take down Na'Vi in a two-game series. A best of three didn't last long. And my predictions, slightly incorrect. Uh, I went for Lull for all four. He got three of them, but noticed was the highest net worth. Bet Boom woke up today and chose violence. They, they gave absolutely nothing to Na'Vi. I'm mind blown by how hard of a stomp that was and in shock yeah god